What makes our video podcast different from others? We ask each guest what they're doing to give back to the world and their local community. Now that they've amassed their wealth, how are they giving back to help others? Additionally, we ask each guest to give our listeners a special gift to help them grow as a person and to influence their business. Welcome to The Roy Snar Show, entrepreneurship and giving back. Now, here's your host, Roy Snar. Welcome back to The Roy Snar Show. I am so excited of today's guest as a good friend of mine, a mentor of mine, and business partner of mine. His name is Daniel Gomez. He's an award-winning business coach. Daniel, thank you so much for coming Roy, on the show. Roy, man, today. it's an honor to be here. I'm here with, look at this, man. This is beautiful. Yeah. Dude, you have an amazing studio here. Thank you for having me, man. I, I love it. Thank you so much. And we get so many compliments because we get to see the, the capital of Texas, Governor's Mansion, and it's just a cool view. It's not like in a little box or anything. Yeah, know? I so love it. Like man, it. I'm honored to be here, add value to your audience, and just have a great time with you, man. I'm excited. Yeah, you know, thank you so much. I mean, Daniel's a very busy person. He speaks globally. He's all over the place. His calendar is completely packed. He hosts huge events. He's, he's everywhere, right? And he's taking time out of his day to come sit down with us to share his knowledge, his inspiration, and hopefully create some aspiration in your lives today. So Daniel, uh, why don't you tell everybody a little bit more about yourself? Well, my name is Daniel Gomez and I love people, right? My brand is Daniel Gomez Inspires. And five years ago, my life was turned upside down. You think because you have the nice house, paid off, money in the bank, Rolex, everything, that yeah. everything's fine. Then all of a sudden we got this phone call that my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. Wow. And everything that we knew got turned upside down. Wow. So I resigned from my job to take care of my wife because she made a decision to have a double mastectomy. Wow. And it really put me in the position, was I going to man up and take care of my wife or was I going to hire somebody? And I chose to honor my wife and just be the leader of my home. So many times we want to yeah. lead everything else, but we don't even lead in our own homes. Yeah. That's and I want to encourage you, become the leader in your home. If you can't lead your home, how can you lead an organization? How can you lead your business? Ooh, how can you lead any good. followers if you can't take care of your home base? And so many times, that's the biggest flaw we have in our foundation of our lives is leading at home. Yeah, no, I can totally relate to that. It, it's hard, too, because we get so focused on business and work and then you come home and you got work on your mind especially as an entrepreneur like it, it's 24 7 it is a lifestyle right it's hard to yes. like turn that switch off and even myself i have a challenge when i come home i got the three kids the dog barking at me and my wife's you know handing me the baby and, and it's like okay cool and i'm thinking about all these clients all these things but creating that disconnect because you can't be a good leader unless you give good time yeah. and i think that was one of the challenges right you were making phenomenal money in your prior career but you you didn't necessarily have the time to, to be the, the leader that you wanted to be at home. Is that correct? Well, so many times this is a mistake that people make is they want to bring home work. Yeah. And you can't bring work to the home. I, I, as much as I would try to just be a great husband, a great father, there's an aspect that I would bring to the house from work. And you can't do that because now the lens, right? I want to encourage you, switch the lens, the way how you see things. When you walk out of that office, when you walk out of that building, when you walk, whatever that is for you, mm. as far as you're on your entrepreneurship journey, your small business, your organization, when you walk over that threshold of your door from the office, yeah, switch the lens, take a moment to really switch the lens and say, intentionally, I'm going to be a father when I get home. Intentionally, I'm going to be a husband. Intentionally, I'm going to be a friend to you. Cause sometimes, right. I know as yeah. entrepreneurs, you love to talk about business, but there's right. a time where it's like, there's stuff we got to get off at our chest that has nothing to yeah. do with business and just be a friend. So you have to be intentional. I think one thing I talk about in my book, the makings of a millionaire mm -hmm. mind is, is intentionality gets you the results. So yeah. many times we hope that things work out. We hope, and you can't live life on a hope system because if you live life on a hope system, then there's yeah. no preparation. There's no, we, right. We don't prepare properly right. the way we should. So the question I have for you audience is, are you preparing properly? Are you really taking a moment for yourself to be intentional and prepare mm -hmm. yourself for the day? for the week, for the month, for yeah. the year. That's, oh, wow, that's powerful because you can always make more money, you can't make more time. And that's one of the heartstrings that pulls on me. Uh, basically what you're saying is, I, you know, I'll be on my phone sometimes at home and I shouldn't be. And then uh, my daughter will say, hey, did you see that? I'm like, ah, oh, no, I, I didn't because I'm working on this stupid phone. Like things can wait. I can, they're only gonna be those ages at a certain time, right? I can always make more money, but I can't make more time. So I'm creating that separate lens is very important. I've been working on implementing that just in my own personal life and be, being intentional about it, like you yeah. said. Well, I heard this at a conference one time. This is, write this down, ladies and gentlemen. 
one of the speakers at the conference said, time is non-refundable. Mm -hmm. You have non-refundable minutes, wow. non-refundable hours, non-refundable days. And we have the mistake and we think that time is refundable. It's not. Once, once the day is gone, it's gone. And if you're not in the present, if, you're not, if yeah. I'm here with you and I'm not in the moment, I'm worried about something else, then your audience can tell because you got that deer headlight look and you're oh, like, yeah. like, what's going on? No, time is non-refundable, non-refundable minutes. And you got to understand that it's only one shot that we get. This That's isn't it. a practice life. No, people make the point. mistake. <laughs> people make the mistake and say, "Well, I got years, I got decades." No, you don't. You have one shot. Wow. This yeah. is a. This is not a practice life. You get one shot in life. What are you doing with this one shot? What are you gonna do with the minutes you have, with the days you have, with the months you have, with the years you have? And and we make the mistake that we think tomorrow is promised, and it's not promised. Yeah. Wow. That is so true, and that that drives me. Like one of my biggest fears is to be in that rocking chair. Hopefully I make it that long. When I was 21, I didn't think I'd make it to 30, but you know, we had a lot of fun. Uh, but you know, getting into that rocking chair and then thinking like, if I only would have it, or if I could have spent more time with the kids, or if I would have just not have been scared and done this big business sleep. I mean, that's part of the show, right? I mean, I never yeah. thought I'd ever have a show. And uh, there's one point I didn't want to, I didn't want to be in the spotlight and then have people find me on social media. That wasn't my thing. But I didn't want to have that fear of regret, like if I could have only done things better, we could have provided a better life, helped more people, mm -hmm. impacted them. So being intentional, like you said, is very good because as the old adage says, I said it before, the best ideas are in the graveyard, right? There's yeah. so many people that <laughs> yeah. say, I'm going to do it. You know, procrastinators reunite tomorrow. You know, you got to just be intentional, do it right out of plan. So what are some of the things that you do to become intentional? Like, how do you practice that? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because when I was writing my book, you were, you were on the makings of another mind. We're never taught to play big in life. Right. And and the, what I mean by this is, is we're not used to being on TV shows. We're not used to being on the spotlight and, and we shrink back. Anytime the attention and light goes on us, mm -hmm. we're not used to it because we're taught like this. This is what we're taught at home. Yeah. Well, don't be bragging. You're right. Don't be showing off. Yeah. And we hear this over and over again. And then what happens is yeah. the moment you have a big win, you celebrate yourself, then you're not used to doing it because you're taught. Don't be showing off. Yeah. Or here's another one. That's true. We've heard this, right? Don't get your hopes up, right? Don't get your hopes up because <laughs> yeah. if you get your hopes up and you don't get that job, I don't want you to be discouraged. Don't get your hopes of applying at that college because I don't want you to get discouraged if you don't get it. Yeah. So we're taught not to really go after big things. Look, mm. you have your own show, man. This is amazing. Yeah. This is, the view is phenomenal. You got a million dollar view. Yeah. I want to encourage you on this right now. Give yourself permission to play bigger. Give yourself permission to think bigger. Yes. Right? Act big, think big, and you'll become big. Let me say that again. Act big, think big, and you will become big. And yeah. sometimes, right, sometimes... You gotta be. You, you gotta do the acting before you do the thinking. Because sure, think about this. Why do I say that? Because I don't like working out all the time. But I know that once I, my body gets in right. motion, then my thinking changes. Because right, a body in motion can't be depressed. A body in motion can't will focus on sadness. No. Yeah. Get moving. You're there, and like right, you're, you get the momentum going, and then you start you start acting in a different way. By the time you leave the gym, you're like, man, yeah. I feel good. Yeah. Boom. You know what there I mean? We, yeah. No, so, I get it. Yeah. So, totally. so you gotta give yourself permission to think big act big and you become big and and we're not taught that as kids right and i think when uh, for myself it's really stretching myself every day to get uncomfortable when i was writing the book the makings of a millionaire mind mm -hmm. i didn't want to write it because i knew there was going to be backlash there was going to be pushback from people saying right well your daniel's just talking about money he's greedy oh, he's yeah. selfish he's typical all uh, they think it's about money but it yeah. takes money to produce the show yeah ladies and gentlemen i want you to tell me who watching this gets free water at home, gets free Wi-Fi, gets free groceries? You don't. It takes money to run your home. Yeah. And, and the, what breaks my heart, the whole reason I wrote the book that I pushed through that intentionally is because I thought about if I could just help one person a day. Yeah. And that's what that's my good. focus on. That's what really motivates me because, of course, you got to work on Dan. You got to work on Roy. But then it's like, okay, who's one person I can help today? Right. And that really helps me to go when, because the truth is, I don't feel like doing it all the time. It's just, right? it's yeah. human nature. Yeah. It's more than just feelings you get to have. And that's where discipline comes in, right? Because yeah. I don't feel like doing a lot of things like going, working out. My, my definition of working out is walking the dog around, going for a jog. You know, I don't feel like doing that half the time, but I know I have to do it to keep my mind fresh, to stay in motion. And that's why there's a big difference. There's a lot of people that don't do that. They rely on their feelings and their emotions only without discipline. And that's why they're, they are where they are. 
you look at some of the most successful people like yourself, I mean, you may do stuff that you don't feel like doing anyway, and that's what you have to do. Yeah, and the, 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 truth, the truth is this, is that nothing's going to be given to you. Yeah. If you don't become intentional about your life, if you don't do it for you, who are you going to do it for? Right. And the thing is this, is one thing I, I write about and I realize is, how come somebody does it? Why, why, why does Roy do it and why does Daniel do it and, and maybe Joe or Mary doesn't do it? Why? Because mm -hmm. we're never going to outgrow the current self-image we have of ourselves. Yeah. See, when we hear that as a kid, don't brag, don't show off, don't get your hopes up. It yeah. shrinks our self-image. Yeah. So on a scale of 1 to 10, right? On a scale of 1 to 10, this is 10. If you have a self-image of a 4, your life's never going to be bigger than a 4. It's going to tap true. out at 3. Yeah. If you're an entrepreneur and a business owner, well, if you yeah. have a level 6 self-image, well, your business is never going to grow above because you're because you're going to be the lid. self-limiting beliefs. Yeah, because yeah. you're going to be the lid. Right. So whenever I go into a business and it's a it's a small business, we'll just say 30 employees or yeah. less. Well, right away, it's like, well, what's who's the lid? And usually, who you know where the lid is? The owner. Yeah. And it trickles down because he's the, the leader. Like you said, got to be the leader in your house. Right. So that same yeah. mindset translates into the house. And one of the big things I always ask myself, how are my kids going to view me? Because a lot of stuff that I do, it comes from a very selfless point of view. It's like, I, I obviously love and care about myself, but I want to do it for them, right? Mm. I want my kids to look up and say, man, dad is awesome. He's a badass. Look what he's done, yeah. right? I want them to have a good role model because that trickles down. A lot of us are in this money doesn't grow on trees. We can't afford that. You'll never be like them. Oh, the rich, this, that, yeah. the other. Those are just negative emotions and self-limiting beliefs. And even when I very first started, I didn't have hardly anything. I've shared the story <laughs> multiple times. I would, I would go to like, you know, Nordstrom's get like a, a nice suit and it looked nice. You can't really tell the difference, you know? And then I would even carry around, like what Tony Robbins said, he carried around money in a, pay, in a, in a like a money clip. And he didn't, that was all he had, but the feeling of having that cash there, right? Yes. So it's almost like the fake it till you make it. It, it, it. There's a lot of realization to that because what you're telling the universe is that you already have it and that it will naturally come to you instead of going out there and trying to change it. Well, you know what? I got, I got a better saying for you. Okay, go for it. Not, it's not fake it till you make it. It's you're surrounding yourself with your future self. There you go. You That's are a good surrounding way. That yourself <laughs> with your future self. What do I mean by that? You're, you're, you're becoming the person that you're meant to be. You're putting on that next level of suit, that next level of wardrobe. You're carrying money with you because you're surrounding yourself with your future self. Right. And so many of us, we don't allow ourselves because geographically, we live our lives based on the kid that we were. That's we go, good we go back to those geographical areas. Oh, my neighborhood and how many of us watching this you still got that friendship yeah. from from middle school from high school and it's great but they're not doing anything they don't have big dreams like you that's why you're watching the show because you have a different perspective you have a different lens yeah and you got to give yourself permission nothing changes right roy didn't become the millionaire the successful businessman until you left that old environment yeah true and now you put yeah. yourself in a new environment and nothing changes until you put yourself in a new environment the other thing too about that, you know, like you said, you're, you're basically forcing yourself into that new environment because comfort is like the enemy. Like you can become comfortable. And <laughs> I'm guilty of that. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's like, I remember when we first started making our first six figures, I was like, oh, this is cool. I can pay all the bills. I have weekends off. I can take the evenings off if I want to. But then I started becoming comfortable and I was putting that lid on myself, yes. right? I'm like, well, it, and if that's what you want to do, that's fine. It's your life. But just have the understanding that you are choosing to go that route. And I didn't choose to go that route. I was like, you know what? I, I feel myself getting comfortable again. How can I take the next step? What's the next ceiling of complexity I can break through to do something bigger and different and help more people? Because if you have the mindset of going out there and just helping the people, everything else naturally seems to come to you. Yes. Yeah. No, well, you're right. Because in 2021, I found myself, we were there with Pernell Whitaker, I mean, with uh, Floyd Mayweather in, in Miami. Wow. We were at this event and we were on this yacht and they were showing us, right? They were kind of telling us this is Scarface, the movie where they <laughs> filmed the movie. This is Gloria Stephans. And That's awesome. it was pretty awesome. And I looked over there and I said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a, a mansion like that one day. I told this gentleman there and he goes, yeah. And I was like, I'm going, I mean it. And he goes, wow. But then, it was a beautiful time when I got back to the hotel room. We took some pictures. I was looking back at the pictures. And I said, the guy in these pictures, he can't buy that house. Because mm. my cheeks had gotten chubby. I didn't realize how complacent I'd gotten. <laughs> exactly to what you're saying. Because yeah. right, you go from having a quarter million dollars in the bank to a half a million. And then your, your bank account is bigger than it's ever been. 
and subconsciously you just get lazy. You get yeah. complacent. Yeah. I remember I came back and I was I was kind of hard on myself. I said, I need a push because this is this is my thing. I was working out, but I was just going through the motions. So my mm. question for you is, where in your life, where in your business are you just going through the motions? Right. I called up Reggie. I said, Reggie, hey man, you've been talking about training me, bro. Like be here tomorrow morning. He goes, what? I go, he goes, I thought he thought I was joking because he's been on me to train me. I said, dude, <laughs> be here tomorrow. If not, I'm gonna hire somebody else. He goes, I'll be there. Okay. He pushed me one more set, one more rep. That's our model, right? One more set, one more rep, one more phone call, one more follow up. Yeah. yeah. And wow. I realized that by him pushing me on the workout, it helped my business. We, ha we did more revenue than we ever had in 2022 because my mentality changed. Whoa. Because this is, a, this is the thing that people miss. The way you do something is the way you do everything. That's a good way to say it. Yeah. And it bleeds. So Ooh. if you're lazy in your workouts, you're just maintaining in your workouts. There's a part of your business that you're just maintaining in your business. You just don't see it. Wow. But when you get that mentality of one more set, one more rep, one more phone call, one more follow up, then your business just compounds over. And days. it builds like, habits. Yes. Right. And that's one of the hard things to break. And I lost habits. my cheeks. I lost my chubby. <laughs> yeah. You look like a chipmunk. Or yeah. But, huh? but uh, honestly, I was depressed because like right under uh, now, I mean, I'm in the, I'm probably in the best shape I've ever been in probably 10 years, but. I was, I was, yeah. I was kind of depressed to be honest with you because I didn't want to be that older, right? I'm going to be 50 years old this year. I'm there 49 we, right now, there we go. but I think I'm in better shape than most people that are in their twenties and thirties. But I say that to impress upon you that you can do it too. Yeah. I'm not going to try to arm wrestle you. <laughs> you probably will. No, but, but, but it's just, it's just the fact that if, if you can't love yourself, if you can't believe in yourself, how do you expect your clients and those prospects to believe in loving you? Oh, wow. That's a, that's a very good point too. And yeah. people. We have this natural ability, right? Like we can sense when somebody is, uh, say, a weak mindset or they're not disciplined in their life. And then that's a, I never really tie those two together, but the clients see that they're less likely to buy from you and you have a lower perceived value, but also your family too. Maybe they're comfortable with it all. And they may have a challenge with like, okay, well, I'm not going to respect dad or mom because you know, they're not very disciplined, so neither am I. That's why we always tell the girls, clean your room. <laughs> Our room's clean. Go look, right? We're leaving by example. Well, the thing is, this is like yourself. You, you, you got comfortable at six figures, but then you kept going. Yeah. And your kids are taking note of that. Yeah. Your kids are seeing that. They're, they're observing that. They learn. Kids learn more by behavior that's presented to them than anything else. So as they're watching you, as your children are watching you every day, that dad is waking up early. Wow, that, now dad has his own TV show. Yeah. Man, this is epic. Yeah. You're inspiring them to just dream even bigger. And you don't even realize that you've already raised the lid for your children. And they're yeah. going to like, nothing brings me more joy and fulfillment is, is my son. He just graduated from Texas State. Oh, congratulations. That's December, awesome. And now he's one, he's brand new in the car business. One of the top salesmen there. He loves it. He chose not yeah. to become a teacher. And I said, well, that's your decision. But he loves sales. Yeah. And he just, he's skyrocketing because he sees that. Dad has three books. I'm working on my current fourth book, a sales wow. book. It's going to be called, um, I can't give out the name, but it's an amazing sales book. Okay. But, but it's just, it's going to be amazing. It's going to come out this year. But yeah. my point is he sees dad here. Wow. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to chase that. I want to become more. I, I see the possibilities because as I was a kid, I was never taught to dream. I was never taught. They were just, Hey, yeah. go wow. this is what I heard. Go to school, get your degree, get a job retire in 20 years and if you're lucky you'll get a pension and a gold watch <laughs> exactly screw that i'll go buy my own watch in two years why not like yeah. why wait 20 years but that's the mentality that people have it is it very much <laughs> like so you know is. we were talking about that before the yeah. show began right right you, you bought a nice watch go buy another watch like why wait 20 years to get a pension 20 years for a gold watch by the time in five years three years whatever years yeah. it is you can have 20 gold watches why not yeah it does what you want exactly but, but that needs to be your mentality is the only limitations are your self-imposed limitations. Get rid of that BS. And I, that's not the bad BS. It's the belief system that doesn't serve you anymore. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that, that is powerful because what, you, what you're doing with your son, right? This is a model of an example. Let's say that you never did any of this. Maybe he would have become a teacher. Now, nothing wrong with that. But maybe his vision wasn't expanded or stretched because my vision wasn't expanded or stretched ever until I joined a network marketing group and it was happens to be with insurance. And then I saw this reality. I was like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm just a hillbilly construction worker and you can make millions of dollars doing this. This is amazing, right? Yeah. I never had the stretched vision, but now it's different. Cause even when I was first getting into all this, there wasn't YouTube really. I mean, this was like 2000, 
six when I graduated high school. I mean, it was it was there, but it wasn't like what it is today, right? Yeah. And nowadays we have shows like this, all, there's all tons of other shows that you can watch and become a part of. There's really no excuse. It's like, if you can't make it, it's because you're lazy, you know? I mean, that's the way we I view it anyway. Well, well the thing is, this is, is, is a book opens your mind. A TV show like this, an amazing show, opens your mind. Mm -hmm. And then really the next step is this, is you gotta find a mentor, you have to hire a coach. Yeah. And that's a mistake that people make is they think that they can read a book and their life will change. It'll, it'll change to a certain extent. Yeah. But the true transformation for me has come when I've had coaches and mentors one on one that we really go deeper and get rid of mm. that deeper stuff that's inside of us. We all have junk inside of us. We all have trash sure. inside of us that that we've been suppressing over the years. And when you go through the coaching with one on one with someone, mm -hmm. it just it releases all that. You're like, wow. So instead of doing it for 10 years, like you're saying, when you get when you hire the right coach, the right mentor, guess what? It yeah. it compounds it, and where you, now it's done, it accelerates the results in a year and two years. Wow! Yeah. I mean, I came out of nowhere in in 2017. My wife was was diagnosed with breast cancer, yeah. like I said earlier, but in 2018 is really when we launched the business, and in five years, people laughed at me when I said I was going to become a motivational speaker. Now sure. we have Sticker Shock Speaking Academy our own speaking academy that people come in from all over the country, even from wow. international. We've had some people come in internationally from Canada and Mexico. But, but I say that because five years ago, I would have never even dreamed of being an author. I would have never even dreamed of, right. having, of being a speaker. But write this down. People are going to laugh at you before they applaud you. And you have to be okay with that. You yeah. can't take it personal and, oh, no, right? It's part, it's part of the gig. Oh, it is. I mean, I remember when I it's first part started, of the gig. <laughs> people said, hey, you're in a pyramid scam, multi-level marketing, all this stuff. You'll never make it. You know, stupid. Come drink beer with us. And I was like, I'd love to, but I got to focus on this. But, you know, a lot of my friends, I easily separated them because a lot of times when people backlash at you, it's be their own insecurities they're trying to project on you because they're not there. Yes. Right? And then that's one of the things I always say, like, well, why would I take advice from you when I'm making more money than you and that you're not doing anything to progress yourself? Like, so don't tell me what to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that was hard getting out of that comfort zone to separate all that. And, you know, I think a lot of it uh, came down to, I, one, a lot of us don't have a choice. Like, we have to do something for revenue. Yeah. But beyond that, it's like you see other people, like people like yourself and other people on stage and all these other things. It's like, well, why can't I be that way? Right. And that's always got to me, too. I saw these people like the top salespeople on insurance come on stage and like, that's going to be me yeah. one day. How do I get there? It was a very interesting <laughs> learning curve and we're still learning. But it, it's like now we're, we're the ones that are on stage. We're the ones coaching these agents reciprocally in just a sh very short time frame in the last you know, six, seven years. Well, I love what you said and, and listen to what Roy said. And I write that in my book. Right? I talk about this. It's your old life. Right. Your new life is going to cost your old life. There comes a point where you have to turn your back on your old life, not in a bad way, but you got to disconnect from that old life, your old identity, and realize who you're becoming. Mm. And Roy made a decision that he was going to turn back on that, like he said, hillbilly life, <laughs> yeah. beer drinking friends, disconnected from them. And it's, it's not that Roy's better than them. He just chose he wants a better life for him. Yeah. Who are you holding on to that is not adding value to you, that is mocking you, making fun of you, but just because... You're comfortable with them. You're not releasing them and letting them go. Remember that your old life needs to go. Your new life mm. is going to come at the expense of your old life. Wow, that is that is awesome. Yeah, that is it's very true. You yeah. did it. You did it. I live in it. I never really put it into quite perspective that you're mentioning. But now that I really reflect back on that, I mean, I stopped hanging out with everybody. I had to. Otherwise, yes. I was going to do what they're going to be. Right. I asked myself in five years, if I keep up what I'm doing, where am I going to be? And it was probably still at the same beer pong table. So I was like, wait a second, like, <laughs> let's, uh, let's just change this up a little bit. I, I need to do something better for myself more. And just like you and a lot of the other folks out there, I always have a passion to help people. Like, you know, God gives us a calling some way, sort of fashion. And my calling just happens to be to be able to speak with people. And, and then I was chose with insurance. That was my avenue to become the, the person to help as many people as possible. But think about this. Earlier I said, you have to change your geographical area. You have to change yeah. your environment. And that's what you did when you disconnected from that group of people. Yeah. Not that you were better than them again, but just the fact that we just had a different path. Yeah. And you sure. were ready for it. And yeah. some of you are ready for it right now, but you're scared. You're allowing those, those belief systems, those right. paradigms in your mind 
to control you instead of just acting in spite of fear. And one thing I've learned is, I've been coached by very successful multimillionaires, billionaires, is they act in spite of fear. Yeah. They don't let the economy control them. They, they right, act regardless of what's going on because a lot of this stuff, if you don't, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't realize that the news is, is programmed to teach us how to be scared, to put fe instill fear in us. Yeah. You're missing out. And you got to surround yourself with Roy's, with Daniel's, with people that are not allowing that negativity, that news right. to get into their mind. Because if you, this is the truth. If you watch the news or news radio and listen to that, you're putting trash in. So guess what? Trash is going to come out. Oh, 100%. I used to be a conspiracy theory junkie. I still love it. <laughs> and you go down, down with YouTube. I mean, there's like hours of a rabbit hole. I'm like, oh my goodness, that makes sense. You know, aliens did build the pyramids, like all kinds of stuff, right? That's more of a positive one. But, you know, if you look at like government conspiracies and all this stuff, the deep state. Now, there's a lot of truth to all that, but I got, I had to catch myself because I was like, man, I'm just throwing my mind full of negative trash constantly. And it was really entertaining yeah. because the human mind, like if we watch the news, it's designed to program fear because people that are scared are controllable, right? And that's what they want. And so I had to stop watching a lot of the stuff that I really enjoyed for so long because it was just infiltrating my mind. We can't control what the economy is going to do. We can't control what Congress is going to do. We can't control all yeah. of that, right? So why am I going to waste my time and energy on something I don't even have any control over? I have enough problems trying to figure <laughs> out the stuff I do have control yeah. over, right? You're so right, That's though. what I wanted to focus on, yeah. Well, well, the truth is this, is that whatever we take in, it, it, it's hard to release it. You have to be intentional. There's four things I want to give you, right? I want you to ask yourself this question. Write this down. What are you watching on a daily basis? Mm. What are you listening to on a daily basis? And what are you reading on a daily basis? Yeah. And lastly, right, who's around you every day? Because if you're around nine broke people, guess what? You're going to be the 10th one. But if you're around 10 Roy's, you're going to be the 11th multimillionaire. Think about that. Yeah. Uh Think That's about very, that. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. We've all heard that saying, but, yeah. but do we really understand what it's saying? Right. And if you're tired of being broke, if you're tired of just living paycheck to paycheck, if you're tired of the mundane in your life, well then stop mm -hmm. being around those nine people that are mundane and put yourself, you know, you know, one of the biggest things when I started my journey is, is when you leave that nine to five, when you leave that corporate American job, there's a part in the middle where I call it, it's the metamorphosis stage. Oh, okay. You're becoming that butterfly that you were born to be. You're no longer that caterpillar, but <laughs> in the cocoon is where it's painful because in the cocoon is where the caterpillar dies. Yeah. In the cocoon is where the old Roy died. Right. In the cocoon is where the old Daniel died. And it stunk. I was lonely. Mm. I cried. I wanted to run back to what I knew mm -hmm. because you're going through, it's like going through surgery, which you really are. You're, you're dying to your old self. Wow. But I promise you, once you come out of that cocoon, you're stronger, you're flying, you see things from a higher altitude. Yeah. You're no longer seeing things from the caterpillar's perspective. You're up yeah. here from the butterfly. That's a, that's a good way to say it. I and like and it's just it's just amazing of, of who you become and who you start. Now wow. you start, to, I mean, I met you, right? But really, if you think about it, I attracted you to my life because yeah, my first you're at a higher frequency and we're, we're living life here yeah. and everybody wants the things, right? They want to, they want to be in the frequency Very energy true. level here, but everything they want's up here but they don't realize it. And it's amazing, speaking of that frequency and how you connect with, when you start thinking differently and living differently, naturally people will come into your lives. And it's, it's, it's almost scary how quick that happens. And you know, my, my mom always used to tell me, hey, you can't soar with the eagles if you're on the ground with the turkeys. Yeah. Right, so it, it's like, yeah. you, you gotta pick your friends wisely. And it, it's hard, even today I have people that say, hey, look, we just wanna hang out, it's been forever. And I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just like, hey, you know what? We're just focusing on the family and the business. I only surround myself now with people that are like-minded. Either we're doing business together or there's a business opportunity. That may sound weird or selfish, but it's helped prepare me extra mentally yeah. in the last few years by just having that mindset. It's no offense to everybody, right? Hey, cool. You live your life, do what you want to do. You want to change it? Cool. Come hop on this train. But yeah, I have to pick my friends wisely now. I love what you said, but I'm going to add another level to yeah, that. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. You got to pick the family members you're going to hang out with wisely too. Oh yeah. But there's family, there's relatives, right? There's a big yes. difference. <laughs> but so, but you got to think about that because sometimes the people that hold you back the most from what you aspire to be or become is your family. They mean well, Yeah. but their dream is not your dream or your dream is not their dream. And yeah. you have to protect your dream. You have to protect your gift. So ask yourself, what family mm. member do I need to let go of? What do I need? You know, I had this cousin of mine. I loved her with all my heart. 
so much, right? We were so close, but she was, she liked to party, she liked to drink, and she just liked to talk about people. Gossip. And yes, and yeah. it's like, I felt a conviction. I said, you know, I got to detach myself from that, and I couldn't expect her to change. So I said, look, I said, I love you, but I'm on this path, and either respect it or you don't, but I'm going to go after what I wanted to do. And wow. And I really believe that one of the main reasons I accelerated so quickly as a mm. motivational speaker and really grew in the speaking realm, which then opened up many more doors to becoming an author and becoming a book publisher right. and all these things that we do now with our speaking academy, is that you have to count the cost of what you're doing right now. Yeah. And so many of us, we count the cost for the future, but what, what do you, what's the cost right now if nothing changes? Wow. What's your COI? Write that down. What's your COI? Your cost of inaction. Oh, wow. I'm an insurance guy, so I'm thinking cost of insurance because that's a, an acronym yeah. we use. But yeah, that's the same thing. What's that, your cost of inaction? Yeah, that's that's awesome. What is your cost of inaction? Yeah. yeah that, that makes total sense. If, if I would have looked at the fact that, man, it, it cost me thousands of dollars to write this book, publish this book, right? I would have said, oh, you know what? It's I don't want to spend $8,000. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. Cost of inaction. Stop me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now this book has made us millions. Yeah. Because the book led to an online program, led to our live millionaire making uh, boot camp that we just had this year, our second one. Wow. And the thing is, we're changing lives and pouring into people. Yeah. So the cost of inaction is people's lives. Yeah, that's great. Right? great. And it compounds too, because you know you think, oh, I'll do it. I'll start next weekend or whatever it may be or next week. But then, now you've lost a week. And if you actually look down, like uh, Ryan Serhan is a very successful real estate mogul. And he has this whole thing about every second counts. What do you do with every second? If you really break down, analyze your day, how much time are you spending, you know, flipping through TikTok or yeah. something else that's totally pointless, right? And if you actually, you know, do an audit of that, I was doing that. I'm like, man, I'm spending like two hours a day on YouTube. I'm like addicted to YouTube, you know? Wow. And I was like, I got to like limit those two hours. Let me just did one hour a week to, to read a book, right? one hour a week. So that's four hours a month. And then you compound that over time. And that's how real winners actually win and achieve way more. I mean, just do an audit of your own time and you'll be surprised yeah. how much you're actually wasting. There's the, the other thing too, I, that drove me to that. I think about some of the most successful people in the world and we have every, the thing that we have equal is time. They can do right. it in that time frame. Why couldn't I, why am I having the excuse that there's not enough time for me to do that? I have too many other things to do. I'm not delegating it properly. I'm not thinking about it properly. Or we make the mistake that that's why I don't ever call myself an expert, even though they say Daniel's an expert, right? In business, I've got a an award winning business coach. But the truth is, mm -hmm. too many experts think they know it all. Yeah. And then they stop growing, right? And we all know this when you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, you rot. Oh, wow. That's a good one. And yeah. I don't want to be, I, I don't want to rot. So continue growing, I don't, right? If I'm a perceived expert, great. Sure. I receive it, but. I never call myself an expert because I'm always learning. I'm always growing. That's I learn good from point. my son. I learn from everybody around me. And that's, that's a mistake that we make because once you think you know it all, we know those people, don't oh, we? Yeah. You know somebody like that. Oh, yeah, that. exactly. And I think one of, the, <laughs> one of the cool parts about Daniel is that he's actually done it. You see, today with the internet, there's all this fake gurus like, oh, I made a million dollars in drop shipping in one week and buy my course. Like, you know, a lot of that BS, right? But Daniel's actually built it from the ground up. He's gone through it, the struggles he can share with that. So when you take mentorship, you buy a coaching program, you buy a book to read, you want to go through somebody who's actually done it and then built yeah. something that's actually recognizable and branded. Because a lot of these other fake people online, you got to be careful of that. And that's why we like having you here and why we're such good friends. We've been through you know different struggles, but we've been through struggles and we started from nothing from scratch and then built it all the way up. And now we help people that way. Yeah. And that's way better too, because what's a better teacher? Like the guy that teaches you economics at school, what, what does he do? Make $100,000 a year, that's it? If that, if at, that. And at a university? You know, he doesn't know anything, so you're going to take advice from that. I mean, you have to pass your test, not again school, but well, you it's know, the same theory. To that point, over 90% of college professors that teach business, yeah, I've never had a business that even 90% don't have a business that makes 100000 Yeah. Never. So think about that. Right. Wow, that's crazy. And over, they're teaching you. Over 90% have not made 100000 Don't have a business that makes 100000 I mean, and, they're, and they're trying to teach you business. Oh, yeah. I remember I took an entrepreneurial class in college, and it was the same thing. I asked the professor, and this was like when I was just starting to learn. I was like, okay, so what, what business have, did you own before that you're teaching us about? I was like, well, I haven't owned a business. I'm just teaching the principles of entrepreneurship. I was like, 
you, that doesn't work that way. Like you have to go through the grind and you know, that's real entrepreneurship. Like all these other things, like I gotta learn to do the COGS analysis or bookkeeping. Well, you can delegate that stuff. There's people that do that, you know, focus on what you're really good at. And I think it's a hard thing that people may have a challenge discovering too with themselves is that not everybody's extroverted like us, but even as an introverted person, you can still become hyper successful. You just gotta feel like, what are you good at and focus on that task and try to delegate all the other stuff away. And you're right. And, and, what, and what I love about what you just said is that Roy's cried. I've cried. Yeah. God knows I've broken a wine glass or two just from frustration. And, and I remember four and a half years ago, I came up with this quote. And people loved it. They're like, wow, it's powerful. It says, you're not a true entrepreneur until you're in the bathroom crying and you're 99.9% .9 sure you're going to give up. Yeah. You're going to quit. But you don't. Wow, yeah, that's powerful. I remember driving in a 95 Dodge diesel truck. I love that thing, dude. It was, we called it the dragon. It was so loud. Driving to LA because I was trying to make this insurance business work. And I was listening to a tape by Ed Milet. And it was called The Eye Opener. I don't think you can get it anymore. It was back in the day when he was just becoming popular. And I was crying listening to it. So I was so pissed off. Like, why is everybody else like having this massive success? Am I just like stupid? I'm a slow learner, I guess. But I remember just sitting there crying so mad listening to that CD. Like, I'm going to make this work. But yeah, there was multiple times throughout a series of years that I wanted to quit. Right. Yeah. But I kept getting called back into it for a reason. I just said, okay, I got to stick with it. If I just stick with it, I know it'll work. It may take me longer than somebody else, but that's okay. I know it'll work. <laughs> and that's, 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 man, you're just touching my heart because so many of us, we want that instant gratification. Oh, yeah. And you got to take your heart to words that Roy just said because we listen, it's over years, over time, yeah. consistency. And many of you are not succeeding the way you want to because you don't have the right character. Something I talk about in my book is if you don't have a million dollar character, a millionaire's character, you're not going to make it. You can't be, you can't be a five figure person and expect to have a million dollar business. Mm, you can't be good. a five figure husband or wife and have a million dollar home. It's not sustainable. Right? No, you're right. You're going to self implode. You're going to self destruct and you're going to self sabotage. And I've seen it over. Many of the clients that I coach, wow. that's what they go through because, right, they have this million dollar business, they have this million dollar home, but they have a thousand dollar character and they have a thousand dollar marriage. Wow. And then they wonder why they're having affairs, why they're hooked on cocaine, why they're taking drugs, why they're turning to alcohol. Yeah. I get it. I mean, I understand sometimes the light's so bright, it happens so quick, but yeah. they don't have the right character. And this is the second thing is, where are you not maturing at? Yeah. Wow. You got to mature. Yeah, no, and that's hard too, because then again, you're breaking the comfort layers, you yeah. know? And so with all your knowledge, what do you, what do you do to give back to the community? Uh, do you have a, a course, a free little course for people? You give out a book? What, what do you do to give back to the local community and nationwide? So we have a nonprofit called the Mahdi Strong Foundation. So my wife being a breast cancer survivor, mm -hmm. we give back thousands to our community there in San Antonio, Bird County. Oh, so interesting. when we were going through this journey, yeah. um, just, you still need help. People don't realize that when you're going through chemo, you're going through radiation. Yeah. Aside from insurance, right? Well, aside from you paying insurance and everything else, we were still spending about a thousand, and it was like a thousand dollars a week in expenses for, for my wife's wow. breast cancer journey. And people would help you, but okay, we got to wait 90 days. I'm like, well, she sheesh, 90 days. It's, that's not, I need, I need to help now. <laughs> yeah. So what we do with the Mahdi Strong Foundation, that's um, Mahdi, M-A-R-I, Mahdi Strong Foundation, is we help women and some men, right? Majority of breast cancer is women, but there is men out there. We give them, right? We help them with their co-payments on chemo, on um, mm -hmm. if they need groceries, right? We'll give them a hundred dollar gift card to HEB. Or wow. we, like, right, we really fill the gap because those are the, right? To people that, that are going through this journey, just helping them with their light bill, $200. I mean, yeah. so we're able to help a lot of people in a broader spectrum instead of just like, we'll wait 90 days. No, like we look at it and assess it, hey, you know what? We've been there because, right, going by, going down that path. Yeah. Filling up somebody's tank of gas, we're like, man. I mean, people just cry and are grateful. So, wow. with the Mighty Strong Foundation, we've been, we've been these past four years, we've been able to give back thousands every year. It's Mighty Strong. Mighty, Mighty, M A R I. M A R I. Mighty. Yeah, Mighty. Oh, okay, Mighty oh, Strong, okay. Strong okay. Foundation. Got it. Got it. And then every 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 October, we have a women's conference called Finding oh. Your Inner Beauty, because my wife had a double mastectomy and. There was a period where she didn't have her breasts and she 
didn't feel beautiful. Wow. So God just put it on our hearts. Find your inner beauty. Look inside for your inner beauty. So every October for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we have a, a conference that we bring in speakers and a lot of the money that we raise, a big part of it goes back to women that have breast cancer. Wow. So we're able to really give back and pour into the community. And you can go to our website, um, Mari Strong Foundation. That's M-A-R-I strongfoundation.com. And you can find us there. And it's just, it's nothing like helping people because yeah. we all need help. We're all going to need help at some point in our lives. Right. And it's the whole thing of giving. Like we have another guest on the show. It's like, if you give to people, don't expect anything in return. That's the best type of giving. Right, mm -hmm. that's, that's true fulfillment, in my opinion. Like you'd be able to donate and help out. You may not see the direct dollar where it helps this family out, but knowing that you're helping these families out, that's super yeah. rewarding. So that's really cool. That so that's what your idea. You're giving back to this charitable foundation, some of the profits of your companies, and making big impacts on their lives. That's that's amazing. Yeah, like this this one lady came and just this was just actually last month, and it, it was it was it was she didn't ask for a certain amount, but just in the wisdom, right? Asking God, well, what do we do? Mm -hmm. And, and we gave her a pretty good chunk, but it felt so good. Yeah. Wow. It, it felt so like, cause sometimes people are in despair. There's listen, ladies and gentlemen, there's still good people out there that really need help. They just need a chance. Yeah. At some time in your life, you needed a chance. Wow. And maybe someone gave you a chance and you forgot about it. Yeah. Give it back. And she came and I just told my wife, just pray about it. What, see what God puts in your heart. And, uh, the, cause the average donation that we give back to people is around 500. Mm -hmm. It was way above that. Wow. But I share that with you because being a millionaire allows you to do that. Yeah. See, money is just a tool, right? People have, you know, does that make sense? Like, 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 how can you make any, how can you help anybody if you don't have any money? If you're broke, yeah. you can't help anybody. Right. So that's a, that's a great way to think. Of it. And then people make the misconception. Oh, well. Money's not important. They say they don't yeah. even they don't even realize. Oh, money's not important. I'm, I'm, love is important and kindness. Well, yeah, but we'll go to the bank. <laughs> yeah, go to the bank downstairs right here in this amazing <laughs> building we're at, and go pay your car payment with love. Yeah, they're gonna say like, get exactly. the hell out of here. You're just, yeah. what are you? You're crazy. Right. But that's the way people's perspective. I is. know exactly, exactly. So with our foundation, we've been able to help just give hope to women, and it's just, it's been beautiful. So that's awesome. I just I just. I love giving back. And another thing that we do too is we have our show that you're going to be on is the Daniel yeah. Gomez Inspire Show. We have some top amazing just guests. Roy's going to be on here soon. And we really add value and in, in inspiration and business and entrepreneurship. So we give you a lot of free content that, I mean, you know, it's, I guess I get in a free coaching session that you're getting because yeah, wow. if you listen to it more, I always tell everybody, get out your pen and paper because what you write down, you remember. Yeah. So with the Daniel Gomez Inspire Show, we really pour in value to our audience and you know, I truly believe that I wouldn't be where I'm at without God. Yeah. So a lot of times people are embarrassed to talk about God in their business. But for me, the moment I made yeah. God my CEO, God, then That's my awesome. family and then business, we doubled in 2021. We doubled in 2022. Right wow. now, we just finished uh, the month of, uh, of May and our records were just like, wow. I was just like, I was in tears. I was. That's so amazing. Because I made God my CEO. Yeah. And Gratitude. People, yes. Yeah, that's awesome. So tune into the Daniel Gomez Inspire show here soon too. That's that's another way we give back and just add value. And so what's the what's the easiest way for people to find you? And then what's one tip you can leave everybody with today that can help make a big impact? Yeah, just one. I know it's no, hard because no, no, there's no, so no, many. No. So 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 the thing is this is uh, send me an email at daniel at danielgomezspeaker dot com. That's daniel at danielgomezspeaker dot com. I'll give you a complimentary discovery session and maybe I can wow. ask you a question or give you a breakthrough, but I love to pour into your community, Roy, and give them that to Daniel nice. at DanielGomezSpeaker.com. And I'll give you that complimentary discovery session. Just put Roy Schnarr Show and I'll, I'll send out the link and we'll set that up. And, and the last thing I want to say is this, is that when you realize that you're more valuable than you thought you were, when you realize there's nothing that you can't do, you really start living. Wow. And for me, the breakthrough came is this, is when you realize you got to stop caring about what people say or think, yeah, that's where true freedom comes. Because we say it, I don't care what people think, but deep down inside we do. Give yourself permission to stop listening and embodying the identities and the labels that people put on you. Well, thank you so much, Janet. We really appreciate having you yeah. on today. And think about the COI, right? This, and if you're an insurance nerd like me, it's not the cost of insurance, it's the cost of inaction. Daniel has graciously 
But you email him, you get a discovery session with an award-winning business coach. This is amazing. Take advantage of that. Buy a copy of his book. It's on Amazon. Read that, implement it into your lifestyle. And the biggest thing is just take action, do something, okay? Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you next time.